If we look right here, Tim, there's so many amazing pieces of player communication. This is why this game, Into the Breach, is so great. Have a look, you're mousing over this guy. It's so clear what you have to do. If you look at your guy that's wrapped up in the kind of spider webby poop stuff over there, I mean, that's obvious that he's stuck. But there's also the red lines underneath. Yeah, the, it, it's super, super clear, like what I can do and what I can't do. And I think just like the green square is like this, it seems so obvious, but if you're missing something like this, I don't know what the hell to do or where I can go. And when you have different unit types, like, like here this game does, um, it's really helpful to be able to know, I don't have to remember like, oh, in, in some other game, this guy moves two, two spots to the left. This guy specifically can move anywhere there's green and I don't have to remember their patterns or anything. She kind of takes it out yep. of my head, you know? And, and for those of you watching and you don't know Into the Breach, it's a turn-based combat game. We need to, we've got our three or four guys, we need to beat their three or four guys to get to the next level. It's, it's pretty straightforward. But the, what we can learn out of this is the way that it's very clear to the player what you can do, what you can't do, what you should and shouldn't do. Just there's a tile that's on fire. There's the little red arrows that are coming out where a new enemy is going to spawn. It's not getting in the way of the game, but it's so clear what we need to do. For me, not having played this, played this game, I kind of know intuitively what we need to protect. Yeah, It's the, the stuff with the bubble things around it. There's nothing else that says protect these things like that. Yeah. You mouse over it. There's a consistent language. What What is it? It's green for goodies that can move. Red for... And, um, the, the, they use the red twice. One, when I hit the attack button, and it shows me my attack range. But two, um, when... Oh, it actually shows green when, when, I, when I click on the enemy, uh, which is interesting. Because now I can see there where they can move too, and that's very, very helpful. Oh, so when you click on that enemy just now, it's showing you the green spaces is where that guy could scuttle to his next turn. Okay, so green is movement. That's cool. And then uh, red is... They've got red arrows saying the direction they're attacking at the moment. Yeah. And your characters have the, the yellow V over the top. One of the characters has a V with no thing in the middle of it, and the others have V with things in the middle of it. What does that mean? Is that... You know, um, intuitively, I don't know what it means, but he's the only guy that can't move. So mm, I would think that that was his movement point or whatever. Right. He can shoot. He can shoot, but not move because the arrow thing is away. the. Yeah. It did. So you've okay. got the movement and the the combat there. Mm -hmm. Which yep. I mean, and the fact that we just figured that out, I it, it shows you that this game is on that point. We're really with the clever. UI feedback. Oh, yeah, no, the game. No, I that thought, we're, we're fantastic you're... at this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to move also, this guy here. Yeah, I, I, the, the squares you can't move into with the mountains, for me, I would never even try to move into that mountain. It right. says you can't, right. thou shall not pass. Whereas the forest, I look at that and I say, yeah, I can, I can walk through that. The water tiles, I also think I probably can't walk into those water tiles. So there's a clarity to it. And I, that's, you know, that's why we're looking at this game and talking about it. There's a real clarity. It's very clear and it's very, very loud what the game's telling you you can or can't do or should or shouldn't do but it fits it's the same graphical style with everything else well you know what else rick i don't know if you notice this but down here in the in the right corner as i hover over a tile it tells me specifically what that tile does oh yeah so units cannot attack in water most non-flying enemies die in water when i hover over the forest it says if damaged lights on fire yep so i, I mean just not only is this game fantastic at the actual like oh, I'm hovering this, this is what this guy does. But also, if you want the actual information, you can get it. In the same way that when I click on an enemy, it shows me where he can move. But it also, mm -hmm. if I hover over him over here, I can see exactly what he does. I can see his health, I can see his special ability, and there's an animated GIF down here that mm -hmm. shows me specifically how he attacks and what he does. And you can see it's got one point, and then your health is going down by one. So it's really right. clear. For people who don't want to read, which is often me, I can just see really quickly in that GIF, like, oh, bang, down by one, got it, really clear. Yeah. It makes the game really easy to understand. And I think a game like this at first can feel kind of, like, overwhelming. But I think the fact that it, it makes it accessible with these different types of things, like, you can't you can't confuse this, right? Like, <laughs> It'd it's be really hard obvious. to figure out yeah. what is, what you know, that's movement. Can, can you show me the difference between a mouse over and a click and a non-mouse over on, say, an enemy? Because okay. I can see on, on my units, I've got 
you know, I can move and I can shoot and the guy you've clicked on's got his health, but the other guys, I can't see their health. So it, it's not showing everyone's health at this point in time. If you right. were to click on another one of your characters, would it show their health? So yes, it does. As soon as you when mouse I, over when it. I mouse over right. it, it shows the health. But the enemy, I'm noticing that when I hover over the enemy, it shows him and it shows me uh, because I'm connected to him by the little mm -hmm. web thing. I don't yep. know if that's why, but I, f I found that very interesting. And then the click itself is what actually shows me the move range. So yep. now he's selected and, then, and he's got a little outline around him. What are the little green love hearty things? Is he getting healed by someone? I believe that's his invigorating spores. That's his special ability. So the soldier sign is providing plus spores. one mm. HP to all Vec. So he's he's giving plus one HP to people right. around he's him. He's got a so, buff that he's... Right. Okay. Yep. We want to take him out. I don't like that. <laughs> you need to make that. Buff. I gotta yep. end turn. And then end turn, that's really clear. Fire damage, that's clear. Power lost. Yep. So giving it a, enough time that we know what happened, and you've sped up combat a little bit here. You can Quite change a bit. that in yeah. settings. Yeah, made yep. it fast. Zoom, zoom. Yep. Which is good as well. Like, it, you, you want to say, what do players need when they first start the game? They want it to be nice and slow. But after a while, they're like, yeah, yeah, come on. Particularly with turn base. I don't want to watch right. the enemies all thinking about, like, the old civilization games where you're like, <laughs> dang, 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 dang. You're like, come on, get on with it. <laughs> yes. No, I, I think that's a great accessibility option, too. And it makes it makes pro players, like, at, at some point, you're going to learn the game, right? Like, we were talking about, like, oh, I'm going to go like this, and it's going to look crazy to everybody that's watching. But, like, at some point, I'm like, okay, I get it. Now yeah. I want to just have a better experience because I know what the thing does. Like right here, I, this game can kind of go as fast as I want to go, right? Well, let's talk, what you did just then was awesome. Let's talk about the second thing that we wanted to talk about in this video, which is how to take a standard genre, a standard game mechanic, which is my guy fights your guy. I can move and I can attack. You can move, you can attack. And how to create something that is more, uh, there's more choice for the player and a little bit more depth than perhaps right. some of these other games have. And what you did just then, perhaps you can talk us through which guy did it and what happened. That is really interesting. So each dude has its his his own level of moves. I'm gonna end turn so we can get their moves back. But basically, not only does each guy have its individual own move pattern, but it also has its own attack pattern, uh, which makes each unit useful. I lost one, which I'm, I'm upset mm. about. That's but, okay. This is uh, this is all about the all about the learning journey, not right. about you winning. So <laughs> this guy. Uh, when I click his attack button, because at first it wants me to move, but I can click his little attack button. And then he gives yeah. me his attack range. And he, as you can see with that little yellow circle, has like this mortar thing that has a longer range. And he and, shoots straight. Yeah, straight yeah. in any direction. Uh, not backwards, though. But then on top of that, as you can see, as I'm hovering over each one of these things, it's, it's, it's telling me what's going to happen. There's a yeah. one in the middle that says one damage, but it's also going to push yeah. people in either right. direction. Uh, and we it, know that we know. Sorry to interrupt. We we know that when you push someone into something else, it damages them even more. Right. So there's an extra layer of strategy. Not just I run up and attack you, but if I can bump you into something, then that's a superior move. So there's a lot of levels to that. So not only can can you bump somebody into something else to get extra damage using an attack like this, but you can also they also choreograph their attacks so you can see this guy is going to attack here this guy is going to attack here that's what these little red circles are for and everything that's covered in these red squares they're going to be attacking next turn but because their attacks are choreographed right if i go like this and i use this attack which is going to move this guy towards this way and this guy towards me this guy is going to take extra damage because he's going to hit me and this guy is going to attack his own friend because currently he's trying to attack this building. But oh, I'm so he's him. he's lined up with his weapon and he's ready, set, go. But if you kind of like whoop, turn him a different way, he still does that. And now okay. it this this goes beyond combat because now what's happening is you don't just have oh let me shoot this guy and take him out. Now you have let me use this guy as a strategic mm. pawn to do the thing that I want to do, and this makes and, combat way different. And when you bumped that guy into you, did you take damage from that as well? I did. You and he took a point of damage? Yes. Right. So if you've got buildings you need to protect and you bounce a guy into it, then that's going to do damage to the buildings you're trying to protect. Not a good thing. Right. But it might end up killing the guy. But if it doesn't kill the guy, then I shouldn't do it. So you've, you've got layer... It's like chess. They've made a turn-based 
combat strategy game that feels a lot more like chess than it does the typical you know my archer has a certain number of hit points and your guy has a certain amount of defensiveness it's right. more the strategy of placement they brought yeah. placement into this game it's a very positional game and it's a very not only are the positions of all the enemies important but they're 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 important relative to the other enemies as well. They're important mm. relative to the, the world elements like the water tiles, because you can actually push them in the water tiles. They're important relative to the the grass and, and trees because the trees can start on fire and hurt them. There, yep. you, there's so many things that, one of the things I just love about this game is like how interconnected it is. It doesn't mm. feel tacked on, it feels designed. You know, there's yeah. a lot of games that just feel like, oh, well, they just added a health bar because health bars. <laughs> but yes. this game, th like, I feel like they've taken away everything that doesn't need to be here. The and they've really tried to polish the things that should. The other thing that is a great innovation over the standard mechanism of, of you know, I haven't played a, a million of these uh, turn-based combat games, but I've played enough to kind of get a feel for the, for the norm, for the standard. And the standard often is that... Um, when i kill your guys i win but in here yeah. we've brought in the environment so if you a little bit like an rts if you kill my buildings then you win if i protect my buildings then i win if i destroy your units there's multiple ways of winning and losing and there's there's objectives above above and beyond just find the guy kill the guy which yeah, is what I, those games can sometimes degenerate into just find him kill him you know I think objectives have have another point too and they, they really change up the gameplay like having to defend this guy here that whole game uh w was a very different way of playing than having to go on offense or uh like we were playing before like avoiding an airstrike or something like that so i killed yep. my people and they're dead now <laughs> and i feel <laughs> Can bad you quickly quickly jump into a new one we'll have yeah, a, a quick look go. at that while we're kind of wrapping things up here uh Destroy the dam and less than three grid damage. Okay, so this is the dam. So my objective now is to destroy the dam, which I would imagine is going to change the uh, change the gameplay up quite Water's a bit. Water's going to come whooshing out, isn't it? We're going to find out. Yeah. <laughs> Deploy. Boom. Oh, and he can jump over the top of you. So you need to pay attention. It's just like chess where you need to pay attention to this guy can move in a particular way and get past me, jump over me. Oop, there you go. I don't know uh, if your guys were supposed to be in the water. I don't think so, but I, they didn't kill me, actually. Yeah. Oh, and you know what's interesting, too, is the flying guys can go above the Oh, they the don't water. get hurt. Yeah. Right, which makes total sense, right? It does make sense, yeah. So I'm waterlogged, so I can't shoot. Oh, that's interesting, too. Okay. So it's it's still an effect. It's a negative effect on me, but it makes total sense that like okay, there's still an effect there where, uh, you know, even though I'm, I'm I I have an extra ability that that some of their units don't have, but it mm. still negatively impacts me in a way. So know? if I was if I was to do a little bit of uh, retrofitting or reverse engineering of how I think they would have gone about designing this game. I think they would have said, turn-based combat, cool, we know what that's all about. We've got to have units, we've got to fight against units. Let's have some, some, you know, certain units can move a certain way, cool, that's good. The part that I think would have really opened up the door is where they said, how do we use the environment? What's the role of the environment in this game? And I think that's the innovation. Yeah. It's not a, it's not a gigantic innovation, like you can, like, environment, well, of course, but the fact that they did that makes this game feel different to other combat, um, turn-based combat games. I'm sure there's others that use the environment, but it's the combination of these factors. Let's use the environment. Some things can hurt you. Some things you have to protect. Let's have the water. Let's have the environment change. And it's. I think the environment is the real star of this show. That's yeah. my my summary here. And for any d developers out there wondering, how do I make my game better? How do I make it more interesting? How do I make Into the Breach and earn all the big... Uh, cash that these guys are possibly earning um how do i do that look at finding an element and saying how do i do this one aspect of it a bit differently and in this case how do i do how do i use environment to make this game stand right. out i think too like a lot of people will be like oh well i want to make a grid based game and i think if you look at this game it's like this game came from what what has to be a grid based game like this whole game is is reliant yeah. on the grid it's positional on the grid. The whole game relies on this whole thing working. So I really like think about 
if you're gonna have mechanics like think about why you have those mechanics and do those mechanics support the decisions that you're making and i think one of the beautiful things yeah. about this game outside of the ui and ux masterpiece of just constantly delivering me all the information i need is that that pure sort of like design that comes from really yeah. thinking about what your mechanics are and why they're there and on top of that every little piece that they added doesn't have one use it has multiple uses and yep. given different contexts different positional elements on the grid different locations different units it's always a different experience because it completely changes the way that you play the game which i think is awesome yeah cool so i think that's a pretty good look at into the breach by the same so. crew that made ftl if anyone isn't familiar so they've they know what they're doing these guys um We've looked at the UI, communication of the player, and looked at the core gameplay. So awesome! I think this, uh, I've enjoyed this, Tim. Thank you I for have too. Us this game. If you like this or you want more of this, make sure you check out Rick's channel. Rick posts these as well. And uh, if check you... out Tim's channel as well, <laughs> if you've seen this online. Uh, and uh, make sure you leave a comment. Let us know what you think of Into the Breach and uh, all that great stuff. And uh, we'll see you around. Cool. Thanks for watching. <laughs>